Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Newsgram. Today we have a rather hot topic for you, and it's more than a little bit controversial for a number of different reasons. First of all, it features two men talking about women. But don't worry about that. This isn't some barroom chat before a bachelor party. Instead, it's an intelligent conversation centered mostly around Barry Wren's book, Sex for Females Only. Barry Wren takes us on a journey through history examining how our views on gender inequality were first formed and then solidified in many cultures. His book also tackles a host of issues that women have faced over the centuries, like sexual objectification, the values placed on young women and the reason for those values, and male dominance. And yes, there are some statements in here that are probably going to make you bristle, like, sexuality begins when the brain decides the body is ready. Or how about this one? Female beauty lasts as long as she has ovarian eggs. But before you get too fired up, remember, the main goal here is to shine a light on how we got to where we are today by taking a peek into the past. So let's have a look in the review mirror. And if we're going to go back, we might as well go all the way back. So let's start at the beginning. The Garden of Eden that everybody hears about that was land which lay between the two major rivers running out of Turkey at that stage. In the myth that was developed, God planted plants and animals and fish and birds into that area there, and he then put Adam in there to look after the whole process. And Adam became very, very bored with what he was doing and he wanted a companion so God made a companion for him out of a, one of his ribs and her name was Eve did you hear him use the word myth I told you this was going to be a bumpy ride the story of Adam and Eve teaches us lots of important lessons like obedience to God sin and sacrifice good versus evil how about marriage and monogamy just to name a few and to be clear I have no reason to believe that that story isn't true but I think his point here is that the idea of women being subservient to men started here, and we've taken it way too literally, focused on only that point and distorted that element of the story over time to the detriment of women. And unfortunately, we still think about Adam and Eve, and Eve was the evil woman because she ate shit from the tree of knowledge. We all would love to get that tree of knowledge ourselves, but... She ate from that and was then discarded from the uh, Garden of Eden. That went down and a lot of people lost their lives because that particular type of mythology persisted. The male dominance and women being at fault all the time. I could, in my book, I've mentioned several instances like that, but I think that that mythology is one of the biggest problems we have, is to look at reality rather than religious myths which have persisted in these areas. I, uh, I get a little upset about it sometimes, but I think of how people's lives are affected by myths rather than by truth. Barry says gender inequality has deep roots in human history. It has been tied to cultural, religious, and legal systems for thousands of years. Religious texts from various traditions have put men in dominant positions. Even today, despite making significant progress, the fundamental structures that support gender inequality remain intact. We've made some progress here in the States, but women continue to face disparities in pay, representation, and rights worldwide. And what's more interesting is while some things have changed, others have remained the same for thousands of years. My real uh, reason for looking at this is to look at the problem which has not changed over those three to four thousand years. And he says a big part of that is simply due to the average man's physical size. Tying a person's worth to their size seems kind of crazy, but I guess it was a different time. Men are big and strong and dominant and were like that when they, three or four thousand years ago and women were small and rather passive. So they pushed the women around and said you must do this or that. And the main reason that 
they had women in their society was to look after the men, to be a, a, a really a, a servant to them. They were subjected to these people, but um, they also provided sexual uh, opportunity for the men, and the men wanted to have male infants born to follow them. So that started years, thousands of years ago, and followed, and women were being taught that they had to follow those rather passive approaches. There is very little difference, even now, in our present century. We find that a lot of men think that they're stronger and better and should have a more dominant role in the household. And the end result is a lot of conflict. Sometimes women are beaten up. Sometimes women are actually killed by their partner because she's not following what he wants. So life hasn't really changed and all the problems are still there. I'm trying in the book to bring the, the thought that uh, uh, the discrepancy, the dissonance which occurs between men and women at present really has been exactly the same for the last four or five thousand years. Research does show that men with lower levels of education and those that hold traditional views about gender roles tend to be the ones that have more negative attitudes toward women, and those men are more likely to be abusive. Now, that's not true in all cases. There are plenty of college-educated wife beaters out there. But he says sticking to outdated ideas about men being in charge can increase the chance of abusive behavior. That started years, thousands of years ago, and followed, and women were being taught that they had to follow those rather passive approaches. Women will always be the ones that have babies. That's just science. But will pretty girls always be so highly valued? Will they always be able to walk on water? I like to think that's changing. You can look at the various stories that always have a young woman, very attractive young woman, being very athletic and very attractive, and men fighting over her and having close contact with her. Occasionally, some of the men actually acquired one of those women and protected her until she became old and when they then dismissed her. So. Being young and attractive was the major thing which was happening in those years. And those women were worshipped. They actually were, men loved to have them. They were uh, like a trophy that they had uh, put them up on the pedestal uh, for the period of time that they owned them. Is that where we got the term trophy wife? That's another podcast entirely. And Since I've probably infuriated you quite a bit with our look at history, I won't even go into his thoughts on sex before the age of 18. Because, well, the past has changed there as well, largely due to the legal system. The book does go into a great deal of detail there, emphasizing the need for more education. Anyway, we're going to move on to hormones and why beauty fades. That's what happens when a woman reaches the menopause. She's born at birth with about two million eggs in her two ovaries. She uses an awful lot of those eggs every time she menstruates. Eventually, she runs out of those eggs, usually about the age of 45 or even up to 50. Uh, And the production of the hormones, there is at least six or seven different hormones, but estradiol is the most important one that stimulates the tissue that makes a young woman grow into the beautiful young women that we love so much. When the eggs run out from the ovary, so does the production of the hormones. So those special cells and organs begin to fade and become old and worn out. They're not there, they don't even function. And while that clinical explanation can sound a little bit depressing, there is a silver lining. Want to keep that youthful glow well into your postmenopausal years? Here's a tip. Women can maintain their hormonal or their cellular activity by taking the right hormones. And that's why 
gynecological endocrinologists are very important for them to see, get some information from under those conditions. He says pay a visit to an endocrinologist, gynecologist, or even doctors who focus on anti-aging that offer HRT, hormone replacement therapy, as part of their practice, and have a discussion to see if there's a treatment that works for you. So many of my female friends are taking hormonal therapy and they look just gorgeous. They're marvelous. They're in their 70s and 60s and marvelous. We're still on hormonal therapy. Barry is a doctor after all, so his book, Sex, is subtitled For Females Only because it's part history, part hormonal therapy, but 100% about women. I love women and I love to help them as much as I can. And I look back at the misuse of by men of their power over women in those days. It's changing and now women have so much power. Their sexuality is a powerful thing, as powerful as any man's strength, muscular strength. But men still bash their woman around, which is wrong. He's not a fan of violence against women or taking a trophy wife either, and he makes that clear. He's also against women using their sexuality to make a living, because while the right hormones can prolong the process, beauty does fade, and a woman's value should never be defined by her looks. Women should not ever be a commodity. They should be revered and loved and enjoyed because they are an individual in their own right. Males don't own them, and they should never be using them as a commodity to gain more money, more power, more whatever it might be. And finally, since this show is being produced on the eve of a major presidential election, here in America, I would be remiss if I didn't include this final point. Right now, we've got four or five major wars going on around the world. The people who instigated those wars are always a male, And the women are now saying, stop this stupid war. Vote for peace? Uh, Just saying, just saying. Anyway, the book is Sex for Females Only by Barry Wren. And it's really for men and women, or anyone who can appreciate a collection of stories and essays designed to re-examine and retell the events that led up to the modern discussions about gender inequality. I understand that it's silly to people around the world. And I'm hoping it sells a lot. Because I I need the money. (laughs) It's available at Amazon and all the other usual places online. And that will do it for this edition of Newsgram from webtalkradio.com. (laughs) 